Hi there, uh, my name is Trevor. I make music as I'm Alone, Hey Submarine, and a handful of other small projects that will probably see one EP and then never have anything else done with it again. Um, I, uh, a few friends have asked me to make a, uh, an Ableton tutorial for them, kind of give them uh, an idea of my workflow and uh, how it is that I make songs. Um, so I, I guess to start off, I just opened up a song that I had on uh, Dysthymia Club and saved it under a new name and uh, just kind of use that for my basic layout. Um, I guess a quick heads up. First things first, uh, I have the tempo set to 90 beats per minute and the time signature is in three fourths. Um, for anyone that's not familiar with time signatures, I guess like, uh, you know, the standard time signature is four fourths and that counts, you know, one, two, three, four. Here's an example with a metronome. You know, one, two, three, four, one, two, and so on. Um, that's the standard beat, you know, like uh, one, Three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, I'm setting the song to three fourths. I've been playing around a lot with three fourths, and that's you know one, two, three, one, two. I said, um, my normal layout for a, a song is uh, I'll reserve the first channel here for my drums. And the second one is normally the bass. Um, I went ahead and moved up the audio track that I'm using to speak to you with a little bit further up so that whenever I solo a track, I can go ahead and keep that one soloed easily without having to scroll down. Um, but I normally have the bass on channel two, and then I have my synthesizers, whatever synths I'm using right here. Uh, that should be a bit further down. Um, and uh, my vocal tracks normally come at the bottom. Um, to start off, I... Uh, when I'm going to use the Massive. I'm going to try and use Massive for uh, all the synthesizers in this tutorial so I can easily share the presets with you. Um, I've got a Massive right here. Um, it's kind of like a, you know, my first lead right there. Um, the uh, preset I'm using is, a, I call it Soft Soul. It's a lead, and that's just uh, the Brittle Soul pad off of Brittle from Dysthymia Club uh, modified a bit. I'll go ahead and leave a link to that in the description. Um, but uh, that's the first sound I'm going to be using. Um, I went ahead and put a uh, MIDI uh, a MIDI effect right here, scale right before the uh, massive. And uh, what that just is, uh, what that does is it just transposes your notes um, to uh, keep them on key and in whatever particular scale you want to use. The scale I'm using now is uh, Aeolian F, and that is uh, C, C sharp, D sharp, F, G, G sharp, and A sharp, and. Uh, Oop, wrong button. Um, that's, uh, I don't have any MIDI controllers on hand. If I had the Ableton push, I'd just be using the pushes uh, scale feature. Um, but uh, I don't have, any, uh, don't have any controllers on hand, don't have an actual keyboard. If you get a keyboard, I recommend learning the actual scales and how to play them um, on your own. Uh, but you know, for now, I just like using the home row keys on my laptop's keyboard. And uh, you know, so I don't have to worry about switching uh, octaves or uh, playing any of the uh, non-home row keys, I just set up a scale preset right here um, so that, uh, you know, I can just play in the home row. Um, sorry, uh, let me take my little guide here. Um, oh, right, the views. Uh, normally when I am producing a song, when I'm making it, I will stick to the arrangement view. I will use the uh, live view here when I am making live sets and playing live shows. But uh, for the most part, when it comes to uh, producing songs, like when I'm first writing the song, I'll stick to the arrangement view. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, I got covered the project layout, drums, bass, and then synths. Um, Ableton Push, chill Ableton Push. <laughs> uh, Ableton Push is the handiest controller I've used and I highly recommend it to anybody looking to buy a controller. It's a bit expensive, but it was uh, one of the most helpful controllers I've ever used. I produced all of KISS on it. Uh, very handy controller. Anyway, uh, after my uh, massive here, this, the original synth, I uh, had added, I've added a few uh, audio effects. You know, without the effects, here's what it sounds like. And it's still kind of a nice sound. I just like to, you know, I give it the chorus for that kind of wavy. Phaser. 
more spacey sounds. Same with the flanger here, which also kind of gives it like a, it adds a little more atmosphere. You know, I keep the dry wet pretty low with the fl uh, flanger. Um, up here, it's a little more extreme. Uh, but uh, for now, I'm just going for atmosphere, so I just stick it to 19%. Um, and you know, I've got my simple delay, which gives it that kind of like elongated, like, I don't know, it gives it a little more wavy feel to it. Um, I've got an EQ rolling off everything around, you know, the 3,000 or so range, 3, 4,000, and it's got a little resonance, you know, it's got that bump here at the end. Um, for the most part, this is totally unnecessary because Massive has a low pass filter in it right here, but, uh... It'll be useful for, I guess, like other, uh, like, uh, if I want to automate the EQ bit and like boost this mid song, um, you know, give it, uh, it, it just, it just opens up a few possibilities for, uh, changing the sound mid song. Um, I have a compressor right here too, which is set up to side chaining. If you're, uh, to side chain with the kick drum on here, uh, the kick drum I'm side chaining it to is muted. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with side chaining, the basic idea is like, uh, if you ever heard those songs, you know, where the synth is playing and as soon as the kick drum hits, the synth kind of, uh, drops down and like, uh, it kind of like blots it out and gives it that breathing feeling. Like, here's a, here's an example of it. And, uh, I've got it set up, or I've got a, a second kick drum that's not muted here. So, uh. So that's side chaining, um, and uh, I, I already have a, my first little loop here, as you saw, recorded. Um, I went ahead and recorded that before starting this. Uh, there were a few takes before this one, and they did not go particularly well, so I've got a little bit of work done. But uh, my first loop here, I just uh, recorded, you know, simple. few times and uh, I just started to layer on my second synthesizer here and uh, that's got a simple delay on it a phaser flanger um, another EQ this one's a little bit um, different than this one a little more useful um, I rolled off everything around like 50 and there's like a slight low and mid boost right here and I uh, rolled off the uh, ultra highs um, this one is also side chained to the drums so that when you know I hit the kick drum Where's it going with this? Uh, oh, right. Uh, so I was listening to this, and uh, I think it'd be neat to give uh, the panning, uh, to give it a bit of a pan. So I'm going to throw an auto pan right here. Uh, set the amount about right there. Play around with that. you know, pan it left and right so that, uh, I don't know, it adds some dynamics to it. And, you know, you can hear it kind of like waving left and right between, uh, if you use headphones or two headphones, you know, it waves between the left and right channels. Um, next, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and add some drums, um, do the first drum channel or the first drum pattern here. So I'm going to be using the kicks. And the one that it's side chained to. And I get rid of those. I keep pushing those. They sound bad. Yeah, let's try with the snap. See what we can come up with here.
anyway, so I don't need a uh, 808 necessarily. And uh, by the way, I'm gonna link. I'm gonna leave links to uh, all the drum samples I use, all the presets I use, as well as a few other preset packs I've released. Um, so uh, those should be available in the description. Um, as you can see, by the way, on my drums, I like to compress the ever-loving shit out of them. Uh, I just think it sounds nice. That's just for me. That's preference. So she do a low pass 24, which is a bit more extreme for filtering. And uh, hold on, just all right. And we're back. Sorry about that. I had to run a quick errand. Um, all right. So where were you? Uh, changing the drums up a bit. Um, I was playing around with different drum samples, finding something I like. Um, yeah, I think I can. Try that. Let's swap those real quick. Try to the keyboard. I want to make sure that all my MIDI channels and stuff are on the same scale. We're using A, O, E, and F. Um, Alright, cool. both my bass and my drums so that they're you know in order um like as you can see the notes a little bit off right here they don't quite perfectly line up um quantizing will just uh you know automatically place them so that they're lined up with the grid you're on or with whatever note you choose uh you can do that by right clicking anywhere on the grid and selecting quantize right here and uh you can set it up to uh align to the grid that's currently on there which you can change you know make Eight to sixteenths and so forth, or you can set it to uh, any particular note you want. I'm just gonna align it to the grid that's on right now. Um, handy shortcut, you can also use Control Shift U, and that will bring up the same menu. Um, I'm a sucker for hotkeys. And uh, all right, let's give that a listen. Real quick. right here you know under voicing it's got uh you know legato trailers on and uh it's got the uh glide uh time set up a bit further up so uh right here you know it uh the notes don't go over each other so it doesn't glide i'm just gonna push this forward a little bit more so that it slides down into that note instead and then just uh, duplicate that over with Control d handy shortcut
pattern and quantize that so that everything's on time. fourth note um, I could just pencil them all in like that individually what I'm gonna do instead is just uh there we go right, I'm just gonna Record it, but I wanted to show you this button real quick. This is a handy button, especially when layering like over the same leads. Um, it's the uh, superposition, whatever MIDI thing. I just got the LL plus sign that adds to your current loop. Uh, so we're just gonna add the hi hat strike quick. set effects after the drum rack to apply them globally to every sample in the drum rack. Um, you know, so at least that's like under or not the volume one, it's unnecessarily loud. Um, but uh, you can also add effects to individual channels. You know, as you saw, I've got a reverb here on this loud goddamn thing. Um, and uh, for the hi-hats, I have a flanger and then a reverb right after that. And so that's what gives us a... Uh, But anyway, get rid of the hats, get rid of the bass, and uh, it'll kind of transition to a soft. Thank you. 
change the velocities, by the way, on your uh, keyboard um, with the, the C and D keys. You can see it changing right there. Um, and you can change the octaves with Z and X right next to it. Um, I think that sounds cool. your uh, mixer selected and uh, I set speaker on and uh, this will just turn the speaker off you know right here if you go to speaker controls um, it'll T to add an audio track. I'm going to go to the samples. Um, if any of you have not found any yet or are unfamiliar, 99 Sounds makes a ton of great free sample packs that have been very useful in everything I've used. I uh, particularly like the Rain and Thunder pack and the Hands Make Sounds. Hands Make Sounds is you know, like the claps and snaps. And uh, Rain and Thunder is Rain and Thunder. Um, we're going to add a uh, Rain Sewer. Drop the rain sewer thing in there. I turn the warp thing off. Uh, you can warp it and make it, you know, switch the sounds a bit or just change the things again. But I'm just going to keep it regular so it's just a regular rain sounding thing. It's a little bit loud, so uh, I'm going to do shift tab, go to the uh, effects here, and add. Uh, Drop the volume down to zero so that I can have it fade in. 
I did not leave the song I used it in, but, you know, there's some notes there for you. Um, if you could download that one, I'm going to go ahead and just copycat, um, or the sound I used for the, uh, losing cycles real quick. questions i'll go ahead and leave some contact info in the description as well um feel free to get a hold of me if you have any particular questions or uh if you know i skipped over something or did a terrible job this is my first time doing this so i'm really not sure what i'm doing at all i'm just kind of winging it um if you have any questions though let me know um anyway let's get into it let's get to it <laughs>
got a decent little bone here to work with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop here, maybe uh, finish this in a second video another time. Uh, but for now, I guess I, I hope you picked up something out of this. I hope you got something. Um, and like I said, feel free to contact me if you have any uh, questions or want to learn anything else. Um, yeah, that's what I got for now. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Uh, I guess before I end the video, I'm going to play the full thing back to you so far, what we got. Um, yeah, let's do that. shut the mic down for uh, the song playthrough real quick and see if that fixes the problem. So that's what we got so far. Uh, in the next video, I guess we'll finish this. Um, I'll show you how I do some of my vocal production. And uh, I don't know. We'll go from there. We'll open it up and see what happens. Uh, but thanks for watching. Hope you picked something up. 